How many people do you think have ever read any of Hitler's private messages as sent on the air? How many people? Tell me. In this country, there's one only, and that's myself. But I don't think the British public really realise how crucial the information generated by Bletchley was. It was like working on the most difficult crossword in the world. Every day, it should have been totally unbreakable. Hardly a vent in the war. Uh, there wasn't intelligence coming from Bletchley. The Battle of Matapan, the D-Day landings. Battle of Alamein, Kursk. The Bismarck, she was sunk. The full story, I don't think, will ever totally come out. This is Bletchley Park. Now, you may be forgiven for thinking that you know all about it. The code breakers, the Enigma machine, and the world's first computer. But the real story is that without Bletchley Park, we would have lost World War II. We had very little training. We'd been on a six weeks course in Bedford, the, the school there, but it was very rudimentary. And when we started work on Tunney, you know, we were suddenly thrust into the 20th century, almost the 21st century, because it was so advanced, this cipher system. Every morning the key had changed, every morning it was another battle. No wonder that so many of them fell ill in one way or another, a lot of them with mental trouble and so on. The strain must have been simply colossal. We started breaking messages which showed that the Germans were going to attack again in huge numbers at a city called Kursk. And we were able to warn the Russians. The Russians fortunately fought it off after the biggest tank battle of the war. And they called this themselves the turning of the tide. So secret was the work at Bletchley the deciphered messages could not even be given directly to Allied forces. We knew the Bismarck had been holed up in a fjord in Scandinavia, and we had no idea when it was going to set sail, when or where to, and if we'd had a spy sitting on the edge of the quayside, he wouldn't have known either. But however, a message was broken here, giving the exact time of her departure and the map reference to where she was going. So, what can we do? We mustn't compromise Bletchley Park. It was never compromised. And so what they did was to send out a squadron of fleet air armed swordfish. The men were told that they were on a square search of the North Sea. And that was quite a usual exercise, nothing unusual about that. And so that's what they were doing. One of these chaps, unknown to him, had the exact map reference where he was going to see Bismarck. So as he was flying along, he suddenly noticed something, my goodness, so he went down to have a closer look. Without Bletchley, it's certain that the German army in North Africa, under the command of General Rommel, would have destroyed the Allies. He was at the gates of Cairo. He needed one more push to get through to Cairo. If he had, that would have been the end of our war. And that would have been the end for Europe as well. Just think what it matters to us that we were able to kill those U-boats in the Atlantic. Without that, we would have starved. Just think about D-Day. What would it have been like if we hadn't had those decrypts which told us where the regiments were? Our troops would have been cut to pieces. Think of the Italian breakthrough that led to the Battle of Cape Matapan. One battle and the Italian Navy didn't come out again. It was things like that that made such a huge difference, and people don't realize this. I've visited battlefields all over the world, and all that normally remains is just a pile of stones or a plaque or something. But this place is still here. And it's not just a battle that was won here, but an entire war.